victory songs of the supporters of the People's Democratic Party have been reverberating across Edo State from the moment it became clear who would win the governorship election. The party's candidate and incumbent governor, Godwin Obaseki's journey to a second term in office, had proved to be a torturous one, right from when he decided to switch camps from the All Progressives Congress. Interestingly, in the weeks leading down to the days leading up to the election, the Edo State chapter of the PDP was still trying to appease those who continue to see Mr. Obaseki as an outsider, trying to usurp the hard work of the more mainstream stakeholders in the party, while also fighting the stem of spate of mass defections by stake stakeholders from the party to the opposition. What then did PDP do right? What particular dynamic worked in the party's favor? For more detailed interrogation of this matter, we're now linking to the Arise Abuja studio from where our next guest is joining us. Kala Ologwadeon is the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Thank you very much, Tudun. Good morning. Congratulations, sir. Broad smile there. You're grinning Thank from you ear to much, ear. <laughs> As one would expect. <laughs> <laughs> but on Saturday, uh, Kola. Thank you very much, Tudu. Thank you. <coughs> on Saturday. You, party. Uh, yes. Good, Good to see you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. But on Saturday, in the early hours of the day, Thank you. you were not smiling. Uh, you issued a statement saying that uh, the opposition, <laughs> the ruling party, APC, uh, was trying to uh, use some agents to manipulate results uh, in Edo North. Uh, but by the time the result was announced yesterday, you were saying the aroma is sweet, the victory is nice. Uh, what happened in between? Um, you know, were you just uh, raising uh, uh, complaints, those complaints, as part of the strategy uh, to uh, ensure that nobody tries anything with uh, the process? Well, it wasn't um, just a mere alarm. Thank you, Dr. Abati. We close monitored the entire process. And from this election, Nigerians have come to appreciate everything that PDP had done in the past and what we have been saying concerning, the, concerning our elections. However, what happened in the Edo State was that PDP was much more strategic than what we had done in the past. We also had a National Campaign Council chairman uh, in person of uh, Governor Yesom Wiki, who was determined to put in everything, including messaging and in ensuring the proper monitoring. Every hand was on deck, including our national chairman, whose only job is to go to his, is to go on his knees, Pensusha Secondus, and pray. He was praying without ceasing to ensure that we had this victory. So for us, we're not just raising May alarm, we're following up both on INEC and APC and ensuring that in everything they were doing, we will not allow them to manipulate Edo because the people were with the People's Democratic Party. Well, this time, four years ago in 2016, as you very well know, PDP and their candidate at the time, Pastor Ize Yamu, headed to court to challenge the victory of Godwin Obaseki. Now, from what you know of Pastor Ize Yamu, do you think that's a possibility this time, notwithstanding the fact that the president, Buhari, has already called and congratulated Godwin Obaseki? Well, as a party, we, we have um, commended <clears throat> the participation of uh, uh, Pastor uh, Ise Yamu in the electoral process, because that has deepened our democracy, uh, democratic culture and has allowed the people of Edo State to be able to choose between the PDP and the APC. However, we've also enjoined him to call his brother, congratulate him, join him in the business of progressing Edo State. And I think that for us in the PDP, we have demonstrated that spirit of sportsmanship. And we expect Pastor Ese Yam to do the same. And the, the, the glee in your face and the joy is so palpable. You know, you're really excited. And I'm sure, like the Yorubas will say, if I ride a horse in your heart, I will not miss my steps uh, this morning. Congratulations, as yes. we say to you <laughs> once again. But you said. Thank you very PDP much. Was, Thank you very much, Rufai. Okay, the PDP was more strategic this time. 
with messaging? What, what was the extra message? And would you say that message from Lagos was in PDP's favor? Well, for us in the PDP, the, we were more strategic because we went into the hearts of the people. And that has been the practice in all our elections. However, the process had always been manipulated against us. But if you look at the, at the issues that were raised in this election, one, performance. Our candidate performed. Developmental strides, they could be seen everywhere in Edo State. And the fact that Adam Tushore Mole, the former national chairman of APC, did say that he had killed Godfatherism. And he now wanted to resuscitate Godfatherism and give it a new life. And the people of Edo State were not interested in that. The people of Edo State were more determined to choose freely who will lead them. The party went into this messaging, drew it to the hearts of the people, and the people were in line with us. Talking about the message from Lagos, I think that did more harm to the APC and its candidate. Well, uh, maybe you'll speak further on that, because people there are people who hold the view that, look, it's not about PDP strategy. Uh, that what actually happened is that um, Governor Baseki became like the underdog, the target of uh, one uh, people were saying they would spend their last cover to get him out of office. Two, uh, Comrade Oshomole, uh, who threatened that uh, he would not allow him to be there. And then from Lagos, you had that uh, statement by uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Chinubu, which inspired Edo nationalism, with Edo people at home and in diaspora, saying nobody uh, can dictate to the Edo people how they run their own uh, affairs. Will you be glad if, uh, would you like a situation whereby Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Chinubu will issue another video uh, on the Odo situation and ask the people of Odo State not to vote for Ita or Jegede, uh, your candidate there? W would that make you happy? Because it could uh, also work in your favor. So all this talk about strategy, strategy, well, maybe things just worked out in favor of the PDP in Edo State by default. Dr. Abati, Dr. Abati, you must accept one fact, which is that Edo State is home to People's Democratic Party. As we speak, as we speak, we have two senators sitting in Edo State. The senator for Edo South, Matthew Rogide, and the senator for, um, um, for Edo, Edo Central. You will understand that we also have members of the House of Representatives. And when Governor Baseki, the governor of Edo State, was coming into PDP, it was an added value for us in our party. And that was the reason we, adopt, we accepted him. Having two senators, from south, well, one from South, one from Central, having eminent Nigerians from Edo North, like our chairman in the party for the South-South geopolitical zone, having people like a former chief of staff in the presidency, and I can continue in the North, and in the Central, which is already home to us. That is where our late leader, Tony Anini, comes from. So the ground was already swelling for the People's Democratic Party. And if you also remember that our aspirants, none of them, none of as far as we were on the field before the coming of uh, um, um, Obaseki, none of them left the party. All these work together in the favor of the People's Democratic Party. And when you go into messaging, I don't know be Lagos. We went for the developmental strides. We demonstrated how the governor has done very well. The people themselves were determined 
that nobody, no God outside the state will come and choose a leader for them. So the billionaires we were talking about, the Gandola and all the others, the Supreme Court, the, the governor You said Gandola, Gandola, who is that? They were just, they, who is they, that? They were, they, they, you said Gandola, who is that? <laughs> who is so-called? <laughs> You know, Nigerians know who is called Gandola. We really don't know who is called Gandola here. Nigerians know. Nigerians, you know, Nigerians already know that. Dr. Abati, you, yeah. Dr. Abati, you know what I'm talking about. I borrowed, a, I borrowed that coinage from your back page. <laughs> <laughs> so, having said, said that, having said that, Dr. Abati, all this work good for us. The, 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 the broadcast from Lagos, I believe, Asiwaji was misadvised. And I also believe that the concept in itself was ill-conceived. It was needless, totally needless. So, whether Asiwaji will make another broadcast in the kitty, I don't know. Undo. Until Undo he does state. it. Undo. Undo state. Sorry, sorry, in Undo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know what he will do. However, the messaging for Undo State is in the works. And when we bring it out, the people of Ondo State, where we also have two sitting senators, one in the center and one in the south, where we have House of Rep members, where we have State Assembly members, where the people are already saying that the government of Akere Dolu is self-serving and that they will not want him to continue in office, we will discover that the people of Ondo State are going to work with the People's Democratic Party to bring in a Yitayo, a Yiluluwanyo, and Nitolor Mufe, or Mojekede into office. <laughs> well, October 10th is round the corner, we'll find out. But, you know, you listed a lot of factors here. Some are peculiar to Edo State. So do you really think, as has been touted, this is the end of Godfatherism, or is that a result of this particular elections and the conditions thereof. And also, if we have jettisoned godfatherism at all, can we also look at jettisoning some other toxic practices, such as messaging, to use your phrase. Some of the messaging was completely unfortunate. I'm sure you'll agree. Below the belt attacks, mudslinging, they have no place in politics in Nigeria. And also electoral offenses, such as vote buying, which both parties were accused of. Can you give me your comments on all of those things? Because the end does not justify the means. I'm sure we agree. Well, if you look at in a due election, and for, for, for us in the People's Democratic Party, we take the due election as a reset of our political culture. And we say so, because since President Muhammadu Buhari was elected into office in 2015, the technology of Kadrida that brought him to office was destroyed. And this is where, for once, since I came into office in 2017, I'm in agreement with INEC. And that, gave, that strengthened my hope in Nigeria that we have not totally lost our democratic culture. The format of uploading results directly from the polling unit, which is the base of elections, helped tremendously in this election. So when you talk about vote buying, for instance, if you follow the elections in the, in the, the, the election in Edo State, you will discover that the people of Edo State were saying, bring the money, it's our money, but we will vote our conscience. And I think that is a resetting of our political culture. As we know, what has happened in the last elections, particularly in the era, of, or in the era that APC had manipulated the elections, where money failed to work, they will invoke force. But in those State, what the people did, because it was their own life, and they were in control of it, if you came to the polling unit, and you came to vote, and you want to vote peacefully, you can have your election and go. But if you brought money to the polling unit, they collect the money from you, scatter it on the ground, and allow people to choose freely. And if you come with violence, they resist you and drive you out of the polling unit. 
So that way, that way, the election was largely, largely free, fair, credible, and transparent. However, I think what came out as the sugar in that tea is INEC's decision to upload results, removing human interferences from the polling unit to the portal. And the public had access to that portal. And the public could have judged what was happening. So this idea of making a phone call and saying, please, can you stop the announcement of the election till the following morning, failed and failed woefully. Because nobody, in view of the international community decision, which we are begging the US and the UK to expand it and make it a global sanction against individuals who are out at every level, whether in INEC, whether among the political class, whether in the judiciary, whoever is found wanting with a determination to destroy our democracy should be sanctioned as individuals. Their assets should be seized. Their families should be affected. And that is the position of the People's Democratic Party. What we need to get some here, sense, right? like Nigerians who say on the street. But can I just um, draw your attention to the fact, sir? I said you're completely right on that score. But, sir, bring the money and let us vote our conscience still constitutes an offense under Article 130. I'd like to point that out. Money is not supposed to exchange hands at all. Well, 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 you know the people became the police of the situation by themselves. You could say that, oh, maybe they are taking loss into their hands. But their action has largely helped the cause of this election. Because if you brought money to the polling unit, they went after you. If you snatch ballot boxes, they, if you attempt to snatch ballot boxes, they went after you. If you attempt to snatch ballot papers, they went after you. I'm sure you will have seen several videos of people who were brought in from Imo State to come and manipulate the election in, in Edo State, who were caught in the bush. I'm sure you have heard stories of people who were brought from Kano State and they were stopped from assessing Edo North and returned back to their respective states. I'm sure you are aware. So okay. when the people have decided that they want the right thing, to be done. They will fight for it. Okay. And it will work. Okay. And, and I should also point out that stamp, uh, stamping of money or tearing money in some cases against, you know, the laws of our land as regards, you know, protection of the currency too. So it will have just been best, uh, Mr. Logunio, that those monies were returned and people declined to collect those monies. But I want to talk about Undo. I had, uh, Arak we had Arakuri Akiridulu uh, about a week or two ago. And he said, Odo is a done deal for him. In fact, I brought up those sentiments uh, uh, to him that his government is self-serving, that uh, it's just about the government of uh, giving people things that are close to him, and a lot of Easterners taking a lot of contracts in Odo. And he dismissed all of that. And he said, you see, people that have, that, that have left me at some point, they are all coming back now because they know it's a done deal for him. And he also went ahead to talk about zoning about the fact that he will complete his term. He's called a retire, you know, a fine man, a good man, that he will complete his term, and when he's a retire stone, he will get it, but he's not a retire stone now. So uh, what do you say to all of that that uh, Arakuri uh, Akiridulu said? Is that, is, that, is that a feeling on the streets of Ondo State? Akiridulu is campaigning. He's speaking for himself. He's at liberty to say whatever pleases him. <laughs> Nobody will quarrel with him over that. But does that reflect the wishes of the people of Undo State? If you are in government and you make school fee at 25,000 naira and you jack it up beyond the reach of the ordinary people's children, and the people are saying that, ah, what kind of governor is this? This is what we were paying before. This is what we have taken their fees to. And you know the value that the average Ondo person attaches to education. And you hit the people from that direction. And you sit down in the comfort of your AC room, and you are telling yourself that, oh, it's because of zoning, the people will retain me in office, whether I have done well or I have not done well. That's Badadash, the people of Ondo State that we know. You know they are our neighbors in Kogi State. 
And we know that they will not accept that from Akere Dodo. They will not take it. And uh, trying to massage the ego of Eitayo, uh, Ilafe, Ilolu, Anyo, Mojegede, and claiming that it's because he's a fine man, he should accept his own. Omojagede SAN is a product of our party. And he has become the candidate of our party. And he's going out and talking to people. And I hope you, uh, uh, um, uh, Rufai, I hope you recall the level of violence which the APC and Akredolu is perpetrating in Ondo State. But you know, in spite of all that, with the Edo election, it, has, it is clear and manifestly so that going via violence will not help your election. No. So the earlier Akredolu realizes that, the better for him. So for us in the People's Democratic Party, we have put out our candidate. Our candidate is already campaigning, moving from street to street, from world to world, from local government to local government. And the people are receiving him because the people truly now want a credulu out. And they believe in the Itayo. Well, two quick things. <clears throat> One, what do you think of the statement by the president uh, congratulating uh, Governor Obaseki and asking him to be magnanimous uh, in victory? Uh, do you consider it something unusual? What is the position of your party? with regard to the president's uh, prompt uh, uh, reaction to the outcome of that election. And then you talked about the uh, threat uh, by uh, the UK and the US uh, to uh, impose visa restrictions on electoral offenders in Nigeria. But your governor in uh, Kogi State, the APC governor who is governor in Kogi State, has said that, look, the persons uh, that are being targeted by the US and the UK They've not been given the opportunity for fair hearing, and that uh, this amounts to interference in the affairs of Kogi State. And also, the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs says this is an attack on the sovereignty of uh, Nigeria. Well, <laughs> well, I'll take the questions the way we have brought them. For President Muhammad Buhari, if you read through the statement of our party yesterday, we did say that we hope that he will maintain this new culture. In history, I cannot remember any government elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, which President, Buhari, which President Buhari congratulated. I cannot remember any. So if he now chose to begin to congratulate uh, uh, um, um, uh, candidates elected outside the platform of his own political party, it's a welcome development. And when I also look at the approach, institutional approaches to Edu election, it was clear that to some extent, INEC was not manipulated. The security had no instruction. And where they had, they, 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 they were very careful in implementing such instructions. So at the end of the day, you know, since APC came into office, all they have been doing is institutional rigging. But in the due election, it was not there. Largely, it was not there. So if President Buhari and the All Progressives Congress have not turned a new leaf, and they want to say that, look, let us allow the culture of democracy to be established and to be entrenched under our administration, we welcome that too. So for us, it's an appeal and advice to uh, Governor Baseki to be magnanimous in victory. It's welcome for us in the People's Democratic Party, we have already advised his own candidate, too, in the APC, to also be magnanimous in his loss. And he should accept the outcome of the election. He should call his brother and congratulate him. And he should also proceed from there and join him in the honorable task of providing leadership in the state. So that, that is it. For the US, US and uh, uh, UK sanctions against electoral offenders, and that uh, um, um, uh, Yaya, Governor Yaya Belu of Kogi State uh, said that they didn't, hear, they didn't have a fair hearing. Fair hearing. I don't understand it. I truly don't understand what he meant by fair hearing. He was just lucky that we were in the depth of election on Edo, and the party didn't want to be distracted. But however, the party will still respond to the same people that he wrote the letter to. 
and will provide a litany of criminal acts, including getting a police helicopter to fire tear gas on voters who were on the queue on an election day. We will provide the video of the gunshots and the, and the house Salome Abu and the video, I'm uh, sorry, and demonstrate that Salome Abu, a woman leader of her party, was roasted after, he was, she, was, after she had been murdered. We will provide all the evidence. What is fair hearing? For us in the People's Democratic Party, we support the action of UK and US. And we are calling on UK and US to also rally their international friends and democratic institutions to impose sanctions on these individuals. Because without democracy, what are we going to return to? So they want to destroy the country. So it's unfortunate. I listened to my friend, the one in, in, in Yaga, on a station this morning, where he said that Yaga did not discuss or did not come up with anything on Kogi because there was no, Kogi was not an election. It was not an election, it was a war. I was a victim. Dino Melaye was a victim. His cousin was killed in Aeto Rukbede just because of power. And here is a man who has been enough. I don't want to talk about I don't even want to talk about him at all. I don't talk about him. Let us confront what affects our nation, which is that we must not allow this democracy to be slaughtered by people whose desire is just to grab power. Grab the power, take hold of it, and do nothing with it. Well, uh, on the foreign address attack, um, for, on foreign, on the, yes, yes. Quickly, in less than a minute. I wanted yes, to wrap Dr. up. Yes, Dr. Abati. Yes, quickly, if you may just summarize. I wanted to wrap okay. up. Yes, I just, I just want to say that. I just want to say that we believe that the Foreign Affairs Ministry were just doing their own diplomatic thing. They know the reality. They know where our nation is today in terms of election. Thank you very much. Well, on that note, uh, thank you very much, uh, Kola Logondino, spokesperson of the uh, People's Democratic Party. And once again, congratulations on your party's uh, victory in Edo State.